Sometimes we have to model relatively complex geometries. We might think this is quite difficult, but with AutoCAD it's, also, it's actually very easy. How do we do it? One method is to use the command surf edge. This we find if we're in the workspace 3D modeling, as I am here, and in the tab mesh. The command surf edge is find, found here on the left hand side. And all we have to do is to pick four lines of some kind which are joined at the corners or which meet at the corners. They're not actually joined, it's not a, a polyline, but four separate lines in this case. And then we have a mesh formed on the actual layer, which in my case is the layer mesh. Okay, does it work with slightly more complicated forms than a rectangle? It does indeed. I've drawn this rectangle in black with an extra line just to show a little bit how this particular form is modelled. And I have here four arcs. I use exactly the same command. Surf edge, first arc, second, third, fourth. And then we have a relatively complex form already made. Do a double click on this and we get the, the top, the side and the front view and a, an isometric. And we say, okay, yes, it's definitely a slightly more complicated form than the one before. Nonetheless, I'd like to go back there. Nonetheless, it's not really how we imagine. These straight lines here are not because AutoCAD is just being a bit lazy in how it shows it on the screen. These are, in fact, straight lines where originally we have the curve. How can, we def how can we draw it in such a way that it actually is more curved? Well, the variables surf tab 1 and 2 are actually what define that. Here in the in a simple form, it's anyway flat, so it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. If we change our visual style to something else, we can see, yep, that's definitely flat. As we get more complicated, though, it does make a big difference. And we can see we're definitely faceted. What I'll do is I'll erase that. I'll change my variables to something a little, bit, a little bit better. They're actually set to the default variables, although if I look now to my system variable monitor, new to AutoCAD 2016, I've actually set it so that the current values, which are actually default values of six, are not actually my preferred values. So I get a warning here and can simply reset all to take my serve tab one and two values back to 50. If I now carry out the same command, surf edge, pick my four edges, now I have a, a lot more of a, a smooth surface. If we look at it on our four views again, we see that is really very, very much more detailed. Now to be precise, the value of surf tab one defines the um, the number of of uh, parts. Could we say to this line? If we were to count them, we would find it's actually fifty in this direction, fifty facets, and fifty in this direction. Uh, surf tab one is defined actually by the first line that is picked, and then the surf tab two is practically at right angles to that. Okay. So here we have a relatively complex object. You can actually use not only straight lines or arcs, as I have here, but you can also use polylines and splines to define the edges of our, of our mesh. AutoCAD is a little, bit, a little bit like a diva. It sometimes doesn't actually want to play along. Um, if you Google this particular command, you will find that I'm not the only one with this particular problem. 
that doesn't lie completely with my installation. I haven't quite got behind the reason why it plays up and sometimes will accept complex lines like splines and sometimes will not. So answers on a postcard. Or if you would rather, you can write a comment down below or send me a, send me a message. But here I have a relatively complex form. It's actually supposed to represent a ditch. If you see the, the top here, uh, the view from the, uh, from the front, isometric view from the side, it is actually a relatively long object with contours defined on various levels. The lines at the end I've drawn using a spline, which I've then trimmed onto each of these lines. So we, that's how I was able to get the, the curve here at the bottom. So what I'd like to do first is to make a number of meshes using the lines that I have here. I'd like to start on the other side actually. Not that it really makes much difference. So I use exactly the same command. And basically, it will make relatively smooth forms. Here, if I remember correctly, I have a, a surf tab value of 100, which is, of course, uh, a lot smoother than 50. But here we have a relatively complex, complex curve, and I wanted to, wanted to show it a little bit clearer. Now, as I, as I go on, the lines which are used to define the, the mesh are actually not integrated into the mesh, but remain a separate entity, so I can reuse them as I go up the side of the bank. I'll activate here my selection cycling status here, and then I can select here between mesh and polyline without having to zoom in to a ridiculous amount. straight away I'm probably not clicking quite properly. If you don't want to watch all of this just zoom a little bit ahead because all I'm going to do is to practically create this this bank using all of these lines and then I'm going to join them together as a, a proper surface. So this bit is just a little bit tedious. I actually did this first for an archaeologist who was wanting to show a trench like this, actually at the site of the, or the presumed site of the battle that Varus had with various Germans in, I believe, the year 8 BC. So, I now have a number of meshes, which are all separate objects. I can actually use a bullish function to join these together. I have a couple of options here. Well, I have three, as you can see. Uh, forget it or convert to smooth 3D solids or surfaces, collect selected objects to faceted. Now, either one is okay, but uh, this of course is going to be quicker. And since I anyway have uh, relatively complex or relatively small facets for my object, I'm going to take this and it shouldn't take so long. Choosing this option um, with this one would probably take about 20 minutes with my notebook here. So I'm just going to Go off and make a coffee and then I'll cut this bit out of the video so you don't have to sit here and watch it. It should be about as exciting as watching grass grow. So here we are about 20 to 25 minutes later. AutoCAD has actually managed to convert these nine different mesh meshes into one complete surface. 
And so if that's what you're after, that's probably perfect. Good, in actual fact, we've finished then with our with this video about making meshes of various forms and complexities. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me either directly over my email, there'll be a link just a moment in the video, or you can use the message function at the bottom of the video. Feel free also to make comments, and if you have any suggestions as well. Have a nice day. Bye now. Thank you.